the questions that will make progress. I came in contact with someone in 2000 and uh, 2000 and uh, where's Asima? Asima did 2000 and when did you do your ID? 2011, right? Yes, 2011. We're looking for some, where Asima is going to Asima is a power system in Julia. Put your hands together. <laughs> uh, he studied in Futu and then he has gone into uh, project management and Basima has branched into printing technology. He is not a digipreneur. Put your hands together for him. <laughs> so, and uh, he's the first pastor of this church, the first pastor. And we have been around here. Put your hands together for him. And then, uh, where he managed to do his IT, that was where. And uh, he got connected to Surveyor in the case of and that was where I also got connected to Sobeo Emekezimo, the CEO of Joe, Joe Specific. He's a businessman. He sells rice. He's a surveyor. He's a public speaker. He's a man who is a child of God. He's an elder in the assembly of God. <laughs> and uh, he's a delegate. He went to Moto. He's a delegate. You know delegate. <laughs> You know, they did the election as a delegate, so I yeah, saw his picture as a delegate. He was there. Praise God. Hallelujah. We just give him the rest for five minutes and then before we invite uh, my friend, Mr. Kenan. Let's put our hands together. We will do the next one. Let's put our hands together as a welcome. So, we will make our hands together. Come on now, put your hands together. I know make that like shouting. Come on, put your hands together. I can go ahead and put those ones together for Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Please just take your seat. I want to first and foremost thank God for this privilege. I consider it an honor anytime I am asked to do this. And um, it's a thing of great joy to have the next um, set of world changers. Right in this way, couple of us together for the same reason. I am always thrilled at how the Transformation Assembly does what they do, or you know how 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 this place has consistently churned out programs like this that. I imagine how someone can give out this kind of value, quality, every time, and then it comes at no cost. I'd like us to celebrate the lion that sits over this day. Father, the Lord, the Patronus, the Apostle. Reverend Barrister, he came as an honor. He said, he said, he said, he said, he said, he was the, he is the only man that has brought my mentor to a way. And when I saw him, I said, the kind of searches he does to locate the quality of people he brings here, I'm always thrilled. Can we celebrate him one more time? Please? <laughs> and uh, I heard when the first uh, person who spoke when I walked in was asking, you know, how much uh, change has come as a result of this conference, the International Men's Conference. And I need to tell you that I'm a beneficiary. You know, I've got to find out that proximity does not equate to connectivity. There are many people who are sitting here, but if I tell you that I take more from Faith House than you, you will not believe it. And you will get to learn as I speak that most of the things you will hear me speak will be referring to this place, and you will wonder, how does he know what happened here? Pastor Ma is a good friend. Please celebrate him. <laughs> and oftentimes I'll call him and say, please, I hope that was recorded because I'm coming down to pick it up. When Pastor George is over came here, I didn't recover. In fact, I'm not recovered till now. When he came and talked about the um, what was that topic again? The uh, was it the making of a man or something? I can't remember. 
They, they reminded, they reminded man. Thank you. They reminded man, and he gave several qualities. My right was turned inside out. I, I went that night. I think we need to work on the mic. I went home that night and I was calling my cousin that attended gateway. I said, "How can you be like this? When this kind of pastor?" He told me, oh, I don't know anything. If I became disappointed in the young man, and then that's why I logged into Pastor George's who I began to, you know, devour every material that came from him. Till tomorrow, there is no phone or device I have where the process of that conference is not recorded. And I play it. I can play it like three, four times every day. I'm just telling you that's what it is for me. So I want to thank God for what is happening here. Let me also celebrate all those who left their tight schedules to be here. Now, I consider us as the people who have boarded a flight and are about to take off. I'll tell you what I saw last Sunday. Sometimes God does those things. He will just show me a picture of where I am going to and what is about to happen. So I saw men who are hungry to take over the city, to take over the industry, to conquer territories. I saw men who had what it takes in them to cover miles and kilometers and make impact in a great way, in different directions. But I noticed with all the zeal that they had, with all the energy in them, as they made their way to run out and begin to take over, there was a leash tied to their waist. They were all tied to a stake. I'm just telling you, this thing happened, I'm sure it didn't take five seconds. And I saw the picture. And I was asking God, can this be connected to what I'm going to do in Faith House? Then where do I come in? It's a simple. As you begin to speak, the assignment is simple. You are not going to lose their waist, you are not going to help the men. Just begin to deliver. There will be cutting of all those ropes and those men will take off and fulfill their stay. Amen. Amen. So I'm just trying to get you in the mood that you've been doing wrong way things for too long. It's time to take flight. We are. Now we are not talking about people who will walk in their rurality and their locality. God does not speak to individuals. When he talked to Abraham, he was talking to generations to come. When he talks to you, he's not talking to your family. He's talking to, 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 to millions and billions that are coming after you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Last week or so, I was in the, the Full Gospel Businessmen Convention. And they were celebrating 70 years. Of a vision, a man, a dairy from a hand. And when that man had that vision, there was nothing in him that told him that 70 years down the line, the whole nations of the world will be having meetings in different places. Over a little encounter, he had a vision. Last two months or three months ago, my wife and I we were in, a, we had a, a service in Kenya, somewhere in Kenya, we attended a church service. We looked when we saw the uh, Winners Chapel. We said we are going to worship there. They spoke Swahili all through. I asked my wife, in fact, that place I became another man because I now asked myself, so, Bishop, where the place in Lotta? Canaan are doing something. And people caught the fire. And uh, if you see the seal there, you will think you were in Canaan land. Everything happening in Minas was happening in that Minas in the Kilifi. That's a local community, it's not even a known place. I'm just trying to tell you the power of vision. That when you catch a picture of what God has for your life, you will divorce smallness. Amen. Your business with smallness will be over. Amen. You know, we went to a photo like you said, sir. And I went there and everybody was talking about the crowd that came. They gave us statistics. They said it's 9,000 something. Now, let me tell you no sincerity. In my mind, I said they never reach. Because I kept walking to the platform and I would look. 
I said, what God is showing me, this crowd multiplied by 10 has not come close. I am trying to put something in a man today because I'm going to be talking about cracking the code of a strong man. I will plead with you once it is like 10 minutes for my time to be up. Let somebody signal me. It's time for destiny fulfillment. Amen. So the first thing I want to say, my lesson, my, my teaching today is in two parts. I'm already told you what God is going to be doing. So whatever the root that in your waist or holding you back is, whether it is ignorance, whether it is sickness, if it is financial challenges, whatever, as I speak, you will notice when your own root will be caught and you will be set free. Amen. So the first thing I want us to know, we can't be talking about strong man, strong man. Who is a strong man? That's the first segment. Then the second will be, how do we crack this goal? How do we become strong men or grow strong men? So the first, there are three qualities of a strong man that I have been able to, you know, um, decipher in the little time I have to prepare this teaching. The first is that a strong man is a man of content. Mm. The first quality a strong man has is that he has content. Mm. I didn't introduce my executive PA. My son is here. Right, is he? Let's celebrate him. A strong man is a man of content. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, from verse 1, reading down, you will notice how Samuel was distraught, Samuel was weeping, that God has rejected Saul, and in Samuel's mind, God had rejected Israel. And God said to him, shut up. Go to the house of Jesse, I'm going to show you who you are going to anoint for me. And in that move, Jesse's sons began to come out. The first one, Elia, showed up. I believe he was looking dapper, just as I'm looking. Fine boy. And when Samuel saw him, he said, Surely the Lord's anointed is here. And God said, That's not him. No. The second person came. The third one came. Shama. And they don't have to call. Somewhere to order, say, Shh, stop, just stop. I don't see as you see. God does not see as man sees. Now, man is looking at dressing, appearance, bicep, the tricep, how good looking six packs. Man is looking at the outward. I look at content. I look at the heart. Let me tell you what God showed me the very first time I thought about this conference. He said to me, when we come and I ask you, I can ask everybody now, how many people are seated on this front row where my son is? Can somebody give me an answer? There are four. Are they not? That is how we see it. God said to me, that's not how I count. So I can count one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, fifteen, and then the next person will be two, and so will be half, uh, and others will be twenty thousand, and one. Are you getting me? Yes. So sitting in front row here could be fifteen thousand people. Aye. Yes, what did he say in the Bible? He said, when. The woman was troubled. She didn't know what was going on inside her. And she went to make inquiry of the Lord. God said, they told you when you went for scam that you have two babies. But let me tell you the picture. Two nations are in your womb. Two manner of people. That's why you see Russia and Ukraine troubling you. You are not like a normal woman. You are not carrying ordinary people. You can have an, a community in an individual. Was it not one fire that was on Moses that was transferred to 70 people and 70 men were on fire? 
Hello. Hi. So seven, Moses was the seventy in one man. When you see Moses, it's seventy people put together in one. Hallelujah. Amen. What of Elijah? The day came, the man said, I'm tired. I'm no longer ready for this work. God, set me free. I want to go home. God didn't say, Go and find somebody. He said, Go and find three men. The content in you can't be offloaded or discharged into one person. Right. And he went and brought Elisha and brought her to jail and then brought herself. And what was in one man was passed on to three people before the one man can go down. I'm just trying to tell you that God does not see as man sees. Man can celebrate you and call you a royal highness. But before God, the writing is Mene, Mene, Tege, Officer. We have weighed you on the scale. Scalar quantity. Right. You don't have weight. No magnitude, to no direction. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. The second quality of a strong man. Firmness. F I R M. A strong man is firm. You see, in Genesis chapter 1, when God created the heaven and the earth, the earth was without form and void, and God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God said, And there was. And God, you see, he kept to say and say and say, and things we are carrying. Then there was, it was time to make a man, and God could not say again. Because what he had in mind for a man could not materialize by God's said. Man had to be made. Hello? Hi. There are materials in man that ordinary works cannot bring you up. From the ideation process to the execution process, God couldn't just talk man into existence. I thank God for our Father who has given us the process the man goes through. Now, let me tell you, it is not time that it takes for a boy to become a man. You can have a 50-year-old boy. Hello. Hi. In our own parlance here, in our society here, we don't regard somebody as responsible until he's married. So if we go by that definition, for instance, I know of 50-year-old boys because they are not ready to take responsibility in marriage. Hello. So God did not create a boy the day he created Adam. He made a man that could take responsibility. He made a man that could have a stand. And he said he called the animals and whatsoever it was that he called them. That was their name. How can you be a man and you are not decisive? <laughs> in first Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, he said, Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your work or your labor in the Lord is not in vain. I've uh, gone through some difficult times lately. So, just before the COVID. The only brother I had, Pastor, very tragic circumstances. He was preaching, and after preaching, he died. Very sad. And now that reminded me also, like how my dad passed on. No sickness per se, just okay, and he died. And then I'm dealing with that. And then I'm trying to manage my mother because she was really fond of my brother. And then towards the end of last year, just this month of November, the very last day of November last year, Right there in my hand, the mother that I've been just dies. Now, is that not something that should worry somebody? It is. So, suggestions began to fly. My mother's people got her, come to call me. Guys, sit down. There is something going on here. Please, 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 please. We have to take it. We've even seen that your own is in six months' time. <laughs> They don't blame them, man. They love me. They don't want to lose me. I said to them, without knowing where you want to take me to, 
you have not seen me there. I said, some of you that are bothered about me can go ahead for me. My mind is made up. Did you hear what Job said? He said, no, he's slaving. This is a young man that has lost everything. Yet I will trust him. I want you to tell somebody next to you, you are, you are too old to change church. You are too old to change God. Hello? A man needs to know that Bible says I'm speaking to you men because you, you are strong. You know the word. So my own younger sisters gathered and they began to talk to me. They said people are coming to the corner. They are coming to pray. I said why do you need to tell me that people are coming to pray? It sounds to me like this prayer is not the usual prayer. <laughs> They said yes, uh, they said they will require some things. Uh, like bitter cola and uh, salt and broom and machete. I said this prayer is it spiritual or physical warfare? Because the way it is going now, it's looking like the battle of Mosanga. <laughs> and I said it's like I'm taking this thing to, like play. That can't I see the trend in the family? And I am the only one left. And it's coming for me. I said to them, you can prize a casket. I will pay, I will get ready for my burial. But that prayer is not holding in my family. Hello. Hi. I said, that's not what my grandfather taught me. Mm. That's not what I learned from anywhere. How can I come at this age and begin to use magic and pray? I said to them, you two have lost your brother already. Your brother has died. Hello, you can't kill a dead man. Uh -huh. I'm trying to tell you, now in, in, there's something we, we, we used to recite, but I'm going to come to that. And they said to me, ah, these people we are talking about are powerful people. They are seers. And I said to my sisters, I am an overseer. So <laughs> they are seers. I don't argue with their seeing capacity. Me, I am overseer. Right now, the mantle of leadership of this house is handed to me. Under my watch, nothing happens. When I am off, people can bring my spirit to come and pray here. Now, nobody could understand that. But I'm trying to tell you that one of the things I'm making man, you have to be fair. You must have stamina. You are not the one that is tossed to and fro by every wave of doctrine. This guy is walking the movie. Here. Look at what Jacob told his first son. Ruben, you are my first son. The excellence, the beginning of my strength. Excellence of everything. Unstable as water. You will not excel. Hello. Unstable, you will not accept. Men do not make excuses. They take responsibility. Excuses are irrelevant in the program of a man. The word irrelevant means not important to the matter at hand. So if you look at Isaiah chapter 43, verse 16 and 19, in the message translation, it says, Forget about what has happened. In the King James, it will say, Huh? You should do not remember the former things. So forget about what has happened. Don't keep going over old history. You are telling everybody your problem. You are telling everybody your problem. Your friend, your enemy, everybody wants to know your problem. And you think they are interested. Who is ready to buy problem? So stop advertising it. Be alert. Be present. I am about to do something brand new. It is bursting forth. I have found out that there is nobody enjoying breakthroughs today. You know, this month alone, I've been speaking, started with redeemed, spoke at the service of God. Last week was where? I can't remember now. Where I went to. And then, okay, full gospel. And then today I'm here. Next week again, I'm going to a service. Up and we could be in my house somewhere. What's going on? 
There is consistency in the message. I am not doing what I'm doing because everything is around me doing well. You see, that was what our daddy talked about through the argument that he was doing what he was doing because things were arose. And that's what God asked me. Maybe this impact is about you. And I told him it's not about me. So though he's paying me, generations must hear the message of transformation. Amen. Nobody that is enjoying breakthrough today that has not had series back to back breakdown. Go and note it down. Mm. You don't buy gray hair in the market. As life happens to you, it begins to come out. <laughs> I've done everything to shape one that came out here and refused to go. But tell you guy, this is a great man that you have suffered in this life. <laughs> so failure plus excuse is not equal to success. I wish I came with a ball, but I didn't know if I had the permission to do that. So that will do some mathematical expression that you go home with. That failure plus excuse is not equal to success. When you go home, go and look at Revelation chapter 2, verse 13. I will tell you what it says. It says, I know where you live, where Satan has his throne. Yet you remain true to my name. So, what excuse do you have? Nigeria is the reason my life is the way it is. Shut up. He's talking to people that Satan has his throne in their community. He said, you did not renounce your faith in me, not even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness, who was put to death in your city. We are Satan lives. He's repeating it again, that Satan lives in that place. That's his residential address. It's not this one that he visits you and goes out. He says, Satan has come. This one is, okay, I'm telling you about that. He will come back to the city. And people, we are keeping the faith. Jeremiah chapter 12, verse 5 asks, a very important question. He said, if you have run with footmen and they wearied you, how can you now contend with horsemen or the horses? Everybody that is here listening to me today in this international men's convention, we are supposed to be running with horsemen. Your competition is not in Imo states. In fact, if you pick any atlas, you will not see Imo states near it on it. I dare you to bring up a map of the world that has Imo states put on it. That map will be wider than this place. So we are supposed to be running with us men. And like I said, excuses don't come in. I have not been able to do so much to myself. In terms of learning what they teach in theological school, homiletics, semiotics, I don't know those things. But I can tell you, I invest heavily in training. I don't know if there's any year I'm not putting hundreds of thousands, nearly, nearly a million. You fly to Lagos, personal funds. Because I want to run with us there. The top quality of a man, a strong man, is that he's a man of values. Values make strong men. In 1884, Richard Dundee, a New York prison warden, he realized that six inmates in the prison he was manning were from the same family. Six prisoners from the same family. Ah! And it's not that they got them in the same guy. They don't spend themselves in prison. And the guy became troubled. And he said, What's happening? You from the same family, you from the same family, all of you, cousin, brother, nephew, and they met themselves in one. <laughs> and that became a source of worry for him. And he asked the question, who is your father? They said they come from the family of Max Jukes. You can browse this data to find out details for yourself. So they went into a research. We need to know who this man is. 
In fact, a study was conducted on 1,026 members or descendants of Marx Jews, and this was found about them. 100 of, 145 of them were confirmed drunkards. 300 of them were delinquents. Delinquents, you are talking about area boys, street touchings, street girls. Are you getting me? 190 of them were prostitutes, public prostitutes. 185 of them had evil diseases they were dealing with at the time. 100 of them had served prison terms not less than 13 years. Now, 300 of them had died prematurely for different reasons. That family alone, by the time the state of New York put together the, what they had lost because of that family, it came to $1.2 million. It was reported that that family made no useful contribution to the society. A Gabian newspaper had an article on Max Jews and he captioned it a family of hoodlums. But right in that same city of New York, there was another man, Jonathan Edwards. And this is Jonathan Edwards that preached that powerful message, men in the hands of an angry God. And the wonder, it seemed to be a different outcome altogether. Because they went on to study 1,394 descendants of Jonathan Edwards in 1884. They did this study. And they found out that at that time, in fact, Jonathan Edwards himself was the president of Preston University. And 13 of his descendants were already university vice chancellors. One family. 65 of them were professors. 60 of them were prominent lawyers. 30 were notable authors. They have 90 of them that were medical doctors. 200 of them were ministers of the gospel. And 300 were successful farmers. And then I, after learning of this, I drew a conclusion that it is the responsibility of fathers to instill values in their children. I beg you, I didn't want to talk about marriage, but let me just digress a little and talk on marriage. If you cannot be a Jonathan Edwards, then be a Max Jews. You know why he succeeded? He married a wife after his kind. So two of them broke record for the devil. Make sure you win a prize at all costs. Are you getting that what I'm saying? The Bible said if you are good, he will spill you out. So if you cannot work for God, then be useful for the devil. That guy is in history books today because of the crime perpetrated by his lineage. May <laughs> God have mercy on us in Jesus' name. Amen. There is no school where common sense is taught as a subject. There is no school where home training is taught as a subject. I'm talking to fathers today. That you cannot abdicate your responsibility to school principal and to pastor of a church. Hello. You must take up that responsibility. I went on a site walk, saw them work some years ago to somewhere in Mgopala, and I saw he had the Royal Highness there. And I wondered why his sons were in the house. I said, Don't they go to school? He said, My children start school from after they are five years old. I said, So what are they doing here? He said, No, 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 no. I take the first five years to teach them the customs of the land and teach them traditions and tell them what are taboos and teach them values that they need to learn. Hey. Oh, yeah. He even made a joke and told me, do you know that these ones that don't go to school? They know everything about our tradition. They know how to greet elders. They know, he said, now, ask these ones that are coming back from school, what animal is this? That they will call sheep goats because they don't know anything. I took a lesson there. Yes. That every education must not be formal. The time we spend with our children is priceless. Every strong man is disciplined. He knows that there are things that others can do that he cannot do. That values. Others may, I cannot. 
you can have the oil of greatness. Like I know so many of us have it. But if you lack the culture of greatness, it will sabotage your success. I'm sure you know if you have read any book I've written or heard me speak anywhere that every talk says the Lord is a probability. Waiting for your cooperation if it will happen, if it will come to pass. So receive it, receive it. You cannot receive anything until you have the values that can contain it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I want to delve into the making of a strong man. How to crack the code of a strong man. I don't know how much time I have. But we'll see how far we can go. Because I've come to find out that power is not explained. Power is demonstrated. I will not be here if I cannot be here. Hello. Uh, Nobody has time to waste and money to waste. Like our daddy said, people have zero tolerance for anything that is not excellent. I will say in Daniel chapter 11, verse 32, that the people that do know their God, He didn't need to tell us that he was spending three hours in God. When you see his delivery, you will tell yourself, hello. Nice. Just the same way, being in this conference today, you don't need to tell somebody attended the conference. When the wife that left you and sees you coming back, sees the church, you will know that you went somewhere. I went for a training in Lagos in May this year. I spent quite some money, thousand dollars. And when I came back, you know, we have all this, our manual, as a piece of God. We have the one redeemed. What do you call the daily guide? We used to use it every day, we look for the dam. For three days as I came back, I dropped all of them somewhere. <laughs> because that's our missionary. <laughs> <laughs> three days, I can't tell my children. I say, abundance is constant. This abundance is constant. <laughs> abundance is normal. Abundance is normal. Abundance is normal. Jesus. Aye. I didn't know this one before. And every day we are reading Job, said Malachi. I didn't know that visibility is as important as ability. Aye. 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 But I went to Davos and somebody told me all of that. Jesus. So it's very important for us to know. You don't need to tell somebody you know God. When they see exploits, they will know there is an intimacy with God somewhere. Oh, yes. Yes. So I know you now. And I was looking at him. You know me when we say public, you don't know what happens behind the scene. Uh -huh. The guy was public, he had to come to my office. So what happened to you? <laughs> so when the Queen of Sheba stepped into Solomon's house and saw the grandeur, that would say her breath left her. When she now started talking, she started confessing. And she was coming. Expecting to see something or that what the even told her was not half of what she has seen. My prayer for you today is that the man that we live here will be twice more impactful than the man that's getting here. Yeah. Yeah. So what are the marks? How can we crack this code of a Strong man. How do how does a strong man convict God? The first item on the table is testimonial. Can somebody say testimonial? Yes. I've tried to use the letter T. It's always my pattern to use a, a letter that will make it easy for you. So you can say seven T's that unlocks strength in a man. Testimonial. In 2013, I attended a men's conference in Nasarawa State, a, a, a city called Masaka. And Casey Kasten, he is a South African, and that's the first time I saw him and the last time I actually saw him. He asked those two questions there. That, those two questions set me on an empire. I thank God for all that your dad has said. Because when I get to meetings like this, I'm not listening to what the man is saying, I'm listening to what he's not saying. Uh -huh. Hello, yeah. I'm asking questions. So I can be here now talking about repentance, but you are getting business idea because that's how it works for me. Yeah. Yeah. 
So the man asked the question, how many of us here have a certificate on fatherhood? And a few people stood up. So it's okay. I don't want to conclude that these are many people that know what it means to be a father. So training can be informal. So how many of you, by virtue of how your father trained you, can recommend that model as a format for training others? You got informal training, no certification given, but you can testify that the quality of training you receive is worthy of being recommend, uh, recommended to another. What of emulation? And out of where I stood up. Now that was what gave birth to my first book, Like Father, Like Son. I think that's actually the most maybe popular book I've written. I've written about nine months after that. But that was the book that negotiated, thank you, sir, the challenges of a fatherless society. When I talk about testimony, what am I trying to say? In Luke chapter 6, verse 40, the Bible says the disciple is not above his master, but everybody that is perfect, everybody will be perfect if he is like his master. Our father said it already. A lot of the things we are doing now is what we saw our fathers do. You may hate it, you may not like it, but it is all you know, and that's what you will practice. So there are parents who don't go to church, they are not here. But in their mind, they want to have a good future. They want to have strong children. They want to build a, a, a powerful future. So what do they do? Every Sunday they bring their children to church. And we're happy for them. So they don't know. In their mind, our children are going to be godly people, even though we cannot meet up. So they drop their children and they go to the bar and watch football and drink and then go home and then come back and carry the kids and then go back. And they are doing the good thing in their own mind. Not knowing that they are teaching their children that church is not for big boys, church is not for fathers. So their children will continue looking for the day they will gain independence. And they will have their own children and they bring their children to church and leave them the same way their fathers used to leave them. And then they will go. And they will tell their children, this is how my father he used to bring me. Jesus said in John chapter 5, verse 19, most assured, you know, Jesus doesn't need to use this term, most assured. He's already saying the truth. Why would he say very, very, or most assured? But he's trying to tell you that this one is in a skeptical. This is not a slip of tongue. So I said to you that the son can do nothing of himself but what he sees the father do. A son can do nothing of himself except what he sees the father do. Psychologists talk about the human mind at birth as being a blank slate. That's what they call tabula rasa. It's a blank slate. It is the impressions we make on them. I'm talking to fathers who are raising children. That whatever you do, you are writing on your child's board. You can't be giving him junk and expect him to come out excellent. Computer people say giggle. Garbage in, garbage out. It is what we receive that we can transmit. So when our daddy is talking, maybe he didn't tell you that the background is a background that is so strong. So when he says, Ibu, when you're talking about my grandfather, you're talking about my father, these are men that have content have value all over, very strong. So, because a snake cannot give birth to something that is not wrong, you see where it is coming from? There is a testimonial I am reading from. In fact, everything you see me is trying not to be a failure because those people gave me a tower foundation mm. to build up. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. One day, I had an argument with my brother. Serious disagreements, but my mother now overheard us. And when she called us, and I was talking to my mother and telling her how my brother ignored me because of the girl in the school. And my mother said, Girl? I don't have a girl in this house. I was serious. She said to me, Are you people aware that I met your father a virgin? Oh, God. I've never heard before that a man can be a virgin. What that day she just said it casually, but it registered somewhere in my brain. So a man can be a virgin. 
I didn't know. So in my mind, I told myself, oh, if you not come to a virgin, then I don't have business being distracted now. I should also wait so that I will have the same testimony. Hello. Hi. You know, I didn't know that my brother, what happened to me also happened to him. It was three days after my wedding, I was in the bathroom. And because the space wasn't much, the whole family extended, gathered to the village. And so we found ourselves in the bathroom together. He was looking at me and said, Guy, you don't look like somebody that is newly married. I told him, I'm troubled. I've not been able to gain access. And he laughed at me and said, he's over the same thing. I said, yeah. See, it's on three days. So I should leave that hotel and lodge that it's not everything that should come back to the house. I did not know that that thing my mother said that day about our father registered somewhere. I want to ask you something. Is there something they will say about you tomorrow that will register in the life of those that are coming behind you? About your nature, about the kind of person you are. Praise the Lord. My time is almost up. I'm sure less than five minutes now. The second is training. Can we say training? Training. Remember, we are using T. Our promotion or appraisal in life is based on the quality of training we have received. I have Pastor George Zuma say something very profound. Ministry is not what I am doing now. Ministry is traveling far into God and coming back to take people to where you have been. If you have not been far, you cannot take people far. If you've not been deep, you cannot take people. Are you getting me? Yes, sir. All of these things have been there before. But I was in hiding, just like the Chinese bamboo. That for five years, you can water it and put manure and put fertilizer and you will not see anything. Because it is trying to take root under. Five years, it is looking for water. When it sounds water deep down, by the sixth year, that thing that I had no, yeah, you see it, everybody's not talking about it. They're wondering where did this thing come out from? It has been locating something. I'm trying to tell you that a leader, as you are a leader, I heard a professor say this thing, he scattered my brain. He said a leader must be distressed by the limitations of his ability. The training you cannot give your child should be a source of problem for you. You cannot be sleeping. When there is trouble, in fact, the only thing it means is that you're a dead man. And your house is on fire and you're sleeping, I'm sorry, I say, God gives you the Lord's sleep. <laughs> sorry for you. It is not the destination that makes a man, but the road that takes us to that destination. I've said it before, that gray hair is not what in the market. The experience is not what in short rides. You can't go to your previous market and tell them I want to buy capacity. You can buy capacity, you cannot buy capacity. Ah, yes, sir. <laughs> you get all of those things when you go through training, when you go through life on a system. There is something that somebody that comes called several times. I've heard your pastor talk about the period of traveling for this ministry to be born. There is something that somebody that calls God seven times before God answers once knows that you that called God once and you answer seven times, you will never know. Hello? Hi. You don't grow muscle by impartation. Say muscle grow now. Receive strength now. Take it. Mm, breathe. And then muscle will begin to grow. You want your muscle to grow? You have to lift weights. You have to go through training. You don't understand that life is tough, but like Paul, you say, I press. Somebody say, I press. I press. So don't be the not my portion Christian. Ask questions. What does it take to go through this? You see, most of the children are suffering because of what their parents could not go through. I saw my grandfather for so many years. More than four hours, he would be kneeling down and praying. And I was wondering, what is in the world is this man's problem? Did he kill somebody? How can a man be praying for four days, for four hours every day? And it was like nothing to him. 
So why do you think it will be a problem for me to pray for two hours in a day? When I have seen my father exhibit that, my grandfather exhibit that. Are you getting me? I'm trying to tell you that you can grow capacity. But how do we grow it? That something is available does not mean you can have it. That is the lesson you must begin to teach the mentees, the proteges that are coming behind you. Because some of us want to be good fathers. So I say, I'm going back now. Daddy, what did you buy for me? Take this, take this, take this, take that. For me now in my house, my children know. So we have a standing order. Every day you give me one verse of the Bible, you have read at their level, it's okay. At my level, I have done 20 chapters a day. But that was it's, I don't like mentioning these things. It's better as I speak. You the Bible says wisdom is justified of our children. So even that small one at six years old. His problem is sometimes she begins to cry. How her small intestine wants to cause because of hunger. And I say it's up to you. Give me my Bible verse, you get what you want. Training is required. How did I become a praying? You see, you don't you, like I said, you don't carry it and say, take it. There is no software you will download now and all of a sudden the software begins to pray for you. You see, amen. You know, I used to live in a place where my neighbor, I don't want to mention the ministry, but he can pray. Every day he'll be praying with his wife and be screaming. And I'm in my own house and I'm just hearing their prayer. So I tell my wife, there's no need for us to pray. This guy is praying for the two families. <laughs> so we are just in our family shouting, Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Like some people believe that Pastor Jack is praying for them. <laughs> MSPBD, you see everybody, amen, amen, amen. I thank God for him. You can't struggle on another car's head down. Yes, you can't go far. Driving using another car's light. <laughs> so Pastor Jerry, that thing you see him do is something he has done all his life. Yes, sir. When you see uh, uh, Nathaniel Bass coming the night to say Hallelujah Challenge, he is worshipping God. That's ministry for him. You, you are shouting, Oh, thank God for this man. Where is your own personal commitment? Hello. Uh, I am not faulting what they are doing. I'm not telling you that it's their life they are living. Yes, that's true. Mm. It's their life they are living. So you two need to have a testimony. You need to have something you've got to do through training. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now when a lion takes over a new pride, if a lion kills a male lion and then takes over the territory, the first thing it does is to kill every cow that he did not give birth to. He's trying to say, I want to be responsible for my future. So I'm telling the fathers here, you are not the so-called good is better than secret love. You are not a good father because you are not a children, they watch all the TV channels and they will I, I was the time you said your kids don't have business with TV. That was the time you mentioned it. I, I, I noticed it, I recorded it. Because it was strange. This man here, Ben Ben, he was doing a, a radio program. And he said that holidays you should, what do you call it? Unsubscribe. Take yourself off. And children try to cry. <laughs> uncle Ben Ten, your uncle that you have your right uncle. Taught me that during holidays, this is a distraction. I listened to Fusi Tembabai, one of the great guys doing things, I think, in Southern Africa. And he said he has big TVs that did not come on in how many years? They are just there for decoration. And he said it's one of the best things that happened to him. So I met my father and I said, I want to write entrance examination. I want to get into the university. And he says to me, I want you to write that exam. And I want you to get into the university. But the problem is I don't have the money. And the person telling me I don't have money is giving money to people that came to collect loans that are not related to us. And he will give them. Tell them, okay, please tell me how you are going to pay back with interest or without interest. And he's giving them. And I was him, he said, I make a pray, God can bless me. He was sending me to go and learn to work for, for to work out my salvation. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. Every time it's not steak, you want it steak, you want it steak, you are growing weaklings like that. So every time I pray, I say, God bless my father. 
bless my daddy. Can I need this money for the exam? Can I need this money? And he was watching me. Sometimes he opened the door. He would see me pray. I pray. I pray. And I come up and said, Daddy, it's three days to the deadline. He said, It's like God wants to bless me with taking money. I take your money for exam very soon. Come. Somebody, we will come very soon. Somebody just called me to say he's about to give me. Pray hard. I think the thing is coming. And I'll go back and say, God, they say what you said is supposed to happen here. Father, you will get perfected. Ah, hey, ah. And I come up and say, That is two more days. He said, Rekha, your prayer is working. Okay. The guy said, anytime from now, I will see him. <laughs> he was just sending me. And in my mind, till tomorrow, I know he had that money. <laughs> but he made me believe that the money was coming on the way. You see, today he is not around, but he taught me that time how to call on the God that used to give him the money that he would give me. Aye. So that when he is not around, I can go to that God directly. Hello? Aye. I brought my son here, not that he's a man. You can see he's one house. He's like, what is this my father trying to do? But this is where he's going to go to. So if I want him to run with us then, I have to stretch him. Aha. He's my only son. So should I have pity on him? No. How did God love Jesus? He loved him and he let him go to the cross. Because prior to that time, Jesus was claiming to be the king and the prince. But he had never gone through suffering. So God said for you to assume this responsibility fully or this office. Let's go through the process. You can't claim to be king of kings when you have not defeated the kings that were before you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I believe my time is up. I don't want to violate it. There are five more, but um, do we stop there? <laughs> okay, the next one is tutelage. T-U-T-L-A-G-E Training is in levels. Training for Boy Scouts is different from training that is given the police. Training that you give Royal Rangers is not the same training that you give a soldier. Now I'm talking about my son. I have not beaten anybody before anybody's child. I'm not sure anybody can blame me for touching the child. I can shout at you, tell you give what you are doing, but why would I expend energy beating somebody when I have a direct responsibility here? So Abraham, God says to him, sacrifice. Take your son for me to the Mount of Moriah, where we, and he carries his servant training. But he gets to a place and he gets to the servant, he talks to the servant and says, Wait for me here. Me and this is my primary responsibility. We climb up the mountain. When we are done worshiping, we will come back. I want to talk to some of us and let us know that it is more blessed to give than to receive. There are some of us we had encounters with our fathers and mothers. How much of it have you taken time to pass on to the next generation? I called my son out the other day. I said to him, In this house, I know you can go to church. It's my responsibility to tell you. In my family, we don't shake head when we pray. Hello? I told him, Before you open your mouth to pray as a member of this house, God has heard you. So any day you see yourself wearing yourself, Tearing your body like you are worshiping back to pray and get results. You have already derailed from the family's tradition. You have gone away from our pattern. Hello. Ah, because yeah. a lot of things have been propagated on platforms, both church, school, everywhere. I needed to tell him what obtains in our own family. Now, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, Paul is talking to Timothy. He said, The things you have received from me be careful to hand over to faithful witnesses that will also pass the same down to the next generation. So there is no experience or encounter you had that exactly for you. It was for you to hand over to your next generation. It's not enough to receive power. 
Some of us shout about the grace of God upon our lives. I thank God for it. I bless God for it. But success without a successor is a disaster. So if nobody can carry the fire, it means you are a killer of dreams. You are a killer of the vision of God. I one day fell into a trance and I saw a man dead in a casket holding a baton in his hand. And I couldn't understand. And God said to me, this was something he was supposed to pass on to other people. And he died with it. So I'm going to create another man again to start the process. So I'm talking to men today. In Tamar life, I know there is one that we teach in every Christian gathering. But I want to tell you, I found out that there are two kinds of eternal life. One is where you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. That one is the popular one we preach. The second one is where you carry the nature, the giftings, the talents, the calling that God gave you, and you pass it on to a generation that to the level that you never go off again. So you plant yourself. I'm sure even when you travel sometimes, you see, I carry the Stadium. You see, uh, Montana Muhammad is, you see, that is eternal life, whether you like it or not. Hey. They are not living in your space anytime soon. They talk about Nelson Mandela. Talk about they, they didn't live for themselves. They believed in something, they caught something, they carried it and passed on to another generation. Hallelujah. To teenage is more like mentoring, mentorship. So all the fire you carry. All the zeal, all the skills, all the grace you carry. Can I ask you a question? Have you found somebody that can take over from where you are stopping or whenever you want to stop? Have you been able to raise a replacement? Training is random. Mentoring is systematic. I used to think that a pastor was somebody without a father. But I read Hebrews chapter 12, verse 6 closely. And it says, if you are without training, then you are a bastard. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So you can have a father who is not available, a father who is not ready, who is not disposed, a father that does not have time for the children has made those children bastard even while he's alive. Go and read your own Bible by yourself. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 8, you will see it. How did Israel become such a rugged nation? God took them on a journey. The very first day, he said to them, I am liberating you. Go and say to Pharaoh, let my people go. That day, it didn't take 24 hours. That day, they doubled their punishment. Pharaoh said, you people have mouth to talk because your work is right. So I have thought, how can God speak that I am liberating these people? I am going to set you free. And more punishment is coming. That is what they call pupillage or tutelage. God was trying to tell them that I am going to set you free. It's not that I am going to hand you freedom. You are going to learn to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Remember, we are talking about cracking this code of a strong man. So Israel is going to take over territories. God cannot be the one killing giants for them. They need to know how to make bricks. They need to have. Are you getting me? Yes. So the things they weren't used to before, they were now making bricks without stone. God was preparing them. Because there are armies that will wait for them in front, ahead. But because they have already built what it takes, their fathers have shown them the route they went through. And that is how they made it. My time is up. God turned them to valiant men. I will end my talk in a minute by just sharing with us how you can effectively, because I don't believe in just telling me the problem without any solution. In one minute, I just run up and tell you. How you can effectively provide yourself a replacement. Provide yourself somebody that can stand in when you are not there. 
So if I, I'm grateful, I saw that, I think the branch of this church is in Portacot or somewhere. Wonderful. So the only thing I can face other things. So you two can do something. I told my son, I think you have 20 times, then you will begin to rise on the platform and at least do the prayer goes before I take, I take over. He's not getting it right yet, but he's starting somewhere. Praise the Lord. So the first thing you do is to show how it is done. To show the protege how it is done. Show your the person you are bringing up, your word. You are trying to tell him, this is how to be strong. The first thing is, be doing it and let him be watching you. Be doing it and let him be seeing you. The second is that you will lead him into doing it. Two of you will do it together. Hello. Hi. Like I just told you now. So after some time now, two of us will share the stage together. He will come and let me do the introduction and I will continue. You see what we should do everywhere. It's just there. If you travel to Europe, you find out that most of the companies there, they will tell you this one has stayed 120 years. It's in Nigeria that as the owner is dying, everything is closing up. If this is our business, everybody is in the business. Whether it is pastor, you know, whether it is we are dealing with pharmaceutical, so that's what the members of that family delve into. So when you have led the person, you will step aside, that's the next page, and watch the person do it. So you are not the observer. I will not take that seat that he's sitting while he runs the program. And then finally, I will step aside and align. See, our reverend is composed here, knowing that whatever is there, he has provided himself in worthy replacement. I don't know if you are getting me. Yes, that can take over when he's there. You are not fit to die or contemplate retirement until you have provided yourself in worthy replacement. Premature death is not death that happens when you're 50 and 40. It's death that happens before you are able to provide yourself a replacement. Can we just stand for one minute and say to God, help me. Not just to be strong, but to raise for you a strong people. You just said about the impact group I made. I believe, sincerely, one of the, uh, my, my people you, you are here, uh, Mr. Beniza is here. I don't know where he came from. Thank you, it's such a pleasure to have him. He's almost you know, around me anytime, too. And I'm sure very soon he'll be running with the mission. But what am I trying to tell you? The way you train a policeman is not the way you train it. So I asked my people the other day, I said, if I ask you, and I'm going, I think I'm going to provide you with five boys' brigade or boy scout, will you not be happy if they say they'll be happy? If I say you have an option of taking these five people or two, sorry, three mobile policemen, all of them say they'll go for three mobile policemen. I said, what if I say three mobile policemen or two soldiers? They said they will go for two soldiers. I said, what if it is two soldiers and maybe a system of Israeli and uh, Russian and uh, whatever, and they tell you they are guarding you, they are, they, they are the SSS, guarding the Vladimir Putin and the President of the United States. They said they will go for that one. Anybody that comes from you should be a soldier. I read about Susanna Wesley. Today we talk about the methods used by, by Charles Wesley and John Wesley. That woman spent one hour every day on one of her nine sons. Every day she would give one hour. Talking to you. you can see she wasn't provide, producing children. She was producing militia for Christ. Uh, yeah. Militia for the kingdom. Maybe they pray there. So that's a way to come out of you. Amen. Amen. Kingdom takers are going to come out of you. Amen. You will not live and go through this life unannounced. Amen. And they will introduce you as the strong father of a weak children, of weak children. Amen. That will never be your story in the name of Jesus. Amen. Open your mouth and pray for one minute. Ask the Lord to help you. Ask the Lord to help you.
Just bless him. Just follow him. 